Okay, the time has come to build up this bike into something which loosely resembles what the riders were using about 100 years ago. And well, loads of you loved it when I built up that cheap bike to super bike, so hopefully this may give some of you an inspiration too. Well, si has got to ride this bike pretty soon, so I better crack on with it. Firstly though, we need to actually strip it down almost back to the basics. So I will be leaving on the bike the chain set and bottom bracket, the brake levers and calipers, the headset, and also the uh, seat bolt here too. But the rest, that's all gonna be freshly put on. That one. Thing is, all these parts will go off to the local bicycle recycling centre. If someone will make good use of these bits going forward. It's not really well done up. <laughs> but that rattled a bit. seems a shame to be taking off a, a rear derailleur after this one. I mean, look at it, it's so basic and simple. Big old spring there and then two limit screws just above it. Might see if I can put this on someone else's bike. Looks like an old Hure one there, so a Sax Hure, classic from back in the day. I just need to make sure I don't catch my finger on any of these exposed bits of cable there, because that they have a tendency to really jam in the end of your finger in that hurts a lot, believe me. Time to take off the, uh, the rear mech. If you look here, it's actually built onto, or almost onto, like a secondary mech hanger. So the mech hanger joins actually onto the frame itself here by this bolt, which has then got like a, a nut on the other side. But then the derailleur is attached onto this kind of hanger from the rear side. It's a really interesting bit of kit, that. I'm gonna take it off and try and save it, because that will come in handy for someone somewhere, I am sure. Tell you what, it's a lot more difficult taking apart an old bike than a new one. If you think about an old bike, you need loads of different tools, whereas a modern one, you can do virtually everything with a five millimeter Allen key. All right, let's get this off then, off that hanger. So long since I worked on one of these styles. No, do you know what? I think it's actually built onto that hanger itself. Of course, if you're using anything with a hex head, so like this, you know, so it's not like an Allen key head, one of these, try and use a six-sided socket. They're much better than a 12-sided one. They have a tendency to round things off, especially on older components. So there we are. There's that, there's that rear derailleur, including the hanger. Look at the state of that. The chain, that's not really gonna be salvaged though. It's, uh, Pretty old and manky. No point in keeping that. <laughs> Look at the tension in that. <laughs> none, none whatsoever. Oh, it's horrible, it's so old, it's almost like it's gonna crack. Part of the beauty though of a bike like this is the condition of it. You know, despite all the grime on it, it's still not too bad really. An interesting cable route there though. Uh, obviously the clips are missing, the originals. They've used some old bar tape here to, to attach those cables onto the tubes. Glad I put these gloves on. Could do with a public health warning really, this bike. It's horrible, this old plastic PVC tape. That old gear lever just attached on via this almost wing nut like bit of kit onto the actual bracket. We'll leave it on the bracket though, so nothing gets lost. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep everything as it was so that it can all be reused in the future. Right, let's cut the cables though. We don't need those. Fingers crossed, this stem is gonna come out all right because these things can be an absolute nightmare. Because the internal wedge in them can get stuck. So sometimes you just have to give it a little bit of 
Gentle persuasion. I think that moved. Oh, thank the world for that, because that could have been painful for all of us. Right, let's take off those cables. There we are, getting down really to the nitty gritty of it. Let's take out that seat post. I know that's not stuck. I've already had a little play around with that. The headset isn't bad. Not bad at all. So what, beautiful head badge on this bike as well. Bikes don't come with head badges like this anymore. Ellswick, England, Barton on Humber. There we are. It's like a dragon of some sort or something like that on the front. Right, I am gonna have a little look though at the bottom bracket first. Tiny, tiny bit of play in there, and my OCD is, uh, well, it's, it's got havoc playing with it right now. So I'm just have a quick look at that before I start putting everything back on. Oh, let's take this out though. Good riddance of that. Although I need this, the seat clamp, don't I, for the new seat post. The bottom bracket, that's spinning all right, actually. I was a little bit worried about this with the cotter pins. It's not something I really want to mess around with too much. Like I said in the last episode, horrible little things. I'm glad we've seen the back of them, generally. But what is really cool on this bike, there's a little oil port down here on the top side of the bottom bracket shell. So I'm just going to put a few drops in. The good news is, with this, any excess will just find its way out eventually. But I don't really want to take it apart, like I said, and re-grease it instead. I'll just put some in there, just to maybe free up a watt or two. Oh, silky smooth already. <laughs> when I was a kid, one of my mates had a, had a bike and it had a little port like this. This one's obviously lost its top cap. They used to come with a little steel cap that went on there, or a little cork, in fact. But this one, sadly, it's lost that, but never mind. Time to put one of the, well, the 18 tooth free wheel on. We've already got a 16 tooth fitted. The new wheel, remember, it came fitted with an 18 tooth, but it was a fixed one. And, well, that would be absolutely savage to send Sai off riding on one of those without telling him. So, I've got to take it off. So, for that, I'm going to need an old lock ring spanner, just to, well, there we are. It wasn't even done up because they tighten themselves. Well, the lock ring doesn't but the fixed sprocket does whilst you pedal along. So, let's just open up this free wheel. What's really important here is to make sure you don't cross thread any soft alloy on the actual hub shell itself. So I will put just a little bit of grease on there just to make sure that it goes on nice and easily. And of course, if I do face any resistance, I know full well to stop immediately, back off, and then start again. 18 tooth. Kid ride, it says on there as well. What do you reckon of the free hub? I think we should put those new tyres on next. The bit I'm not looking forward to is trying to put these old Schrader inner tubes back inside the tyres because, well, they're going to be quite wide, I think. Although, to be fair, they will match up perfectly with the actual uh, width of those new tyres, which is 30 millimetres. I haven't seen Schrader 700C tubes for quite some time. Cross your fingers for me, please. They're actually not too bad. 700 by 25, 32. Well, they should fit absolutely fine. It's just that big old valve always worries me a little bit. Let's put the first one on then. I'm not liking the chance of these tires fitting onto this rim because the actual internals of the rim are really not that shallow. This isn't, this isn't ideal. Right, let's take it off. Let's start again. This is not going to plan. Tell you what, it's just not going to go. And it's nothing to do with the tyre, I must say, because I just tried it on a different rim whilst I was struggling and cursing. It's probably because these wheels are very cheap, actually, and quite often they're not manufactured to the same tolerances. But the good news is, just went underneath my desk, and da-da, I've got some other gum wall tyres to put on there, or skim wall, if you like. So these ones, I've already tried, and uh, they go on like a piece of cake. So. 
There we are. Some authenticity is remained. Gum sidewalls. Right, let's just hope these inner tubes can go inside now. Oh, rookie. I need to line that up. Right, my heart can start beating again now after that. A bit heart in mouth moment. We'll pump those up shortly, but first of all, we just want to make sure it goes inside the frame okay, because older wheels tended to have different sized axles, so we just need to bear that in mind too. So what I am going to do as well is just space out in between the dropouts with quite a few washers actually, this axle, just so I don't have to crush the frame too much. As you can see, there's a bit of play there. A little bit of crushing on it, well, or if you like closing of the dropouts, it doesn't matter too much because of it being steel, but that is far too much for comfort, really. Oh, look at that, as if by magic. There will be people out there who are saying it's not the right thing to be doing, but to be honest, it's absolutely fine. Right, time to put some nuts on the wheel. Just wanna make sure the threads are okay on everything before I go ahead. So now we've managed to find some spacers or washers just to pack out that axle a little bit. It's time to fit the rear wheel. And I thought to myself, well, bikes back then, they didn't actually use nuts like we know them today. Instead, they used wing nuts. So I went hunting around in my own shed, couldn't find anything. I was convinced I had some. I sent my dad up into his loft. He found some, sadly, not in time actually for today though, because I couldn't get to his place. But I did actually have a go on my day off at actually trying to fabricate up some wing nuts. So my first attempt wanted to look something like this here. Look how neat and tidy that is. So a couple of bits of four mil steel rod and I drilled just the inside of the nuts. Just, I don't know if you can see in this one here, just drilled a little hole in there with the aim of putting that rod in there and hoping it would um, be able to sit in there whilst I arc welded it. Sadly, not. And the results were, well, not ideal. So these are actually super glued in. Cheated a little bit there. Um, so wing nuts, they were around before quick releases. You tightened up the wheel like that and essentially you didn't have to have a spanner to remove it. My last effort, because the first one failed when I tried to weld it, looks something like this. So something like what you'd see on a, on a vintage car almost, a really bad vintage car. But yeah, you get the idea here. So instead of having to use a spanner, you can simply undo it with your fingers, or at least that's the thinking of it. Yeah, I wonder if I should leave this one on and tell Si it's absolutely fine. And when he comes to adjust the back wheel, they just snap off and then I get an irate phone call. Right, I have got some fantastic news. News flash, not only is the sun out, but I've managed to find my own wing nuts. Check these out. So, went in the attic, or rather my dad did. He found them. I can put them on to replace the homemade one, which I made, or welded together. So, fingers crossed, these are gonna do the business. Right, okay, let's fit the wheel anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first of all is set up the wheel with the 16 tooth sprocket on this side, so on the drive side. The reason being, when we've got the chain tension correct, when we come to swap the wheel around in the 18 tooth, that's a bigger size. So essentially it's gonna be pulling it further forward in the dropout. So I'll set it up here, right at the back of the dropout. We'll try and get that chain tension set up when it comes to that. So it works nice and correctly. Because of course, when you don't have a derailleur, or a chain catcher or anything like that, you need to make sure it's absolutely perfect. I'm not gonna to touch these though, instead, I'll do them up just like this. So when is really suffering, you can't undo that wheel nut. But who knows, actually, maybe by the time he comes to ride it, I'll have the actual proper wing nuts in place, just to well, give him a little bit of a chance. So as predicted, I have run into a spot of bother. Now the dropouts are slightly too narrow for this axle. So I am gonna have to do a little bit of dremeling. So I just wanted to try and demonstrate there. You can see it's just slightly too narrow for the axle to actually pass in. Obviously I don't wanna go bashing the wheel into place because that's not gonna do the thread any good and also potentially not the dropouts. So what I can do is something I have done in the past before 
It's not really that advisable, but it's actually just to take a fraction of the actual dropout material off, meaning that you've got enough room to put that axle in place. Yeah, rather sigh than me. Don't try this at home, by the way. <laughs> Oh, that paint burning. Almost, we're getting there. There we are, just enough. It's only a fraction, it's probably not even a millimetre that needs removing. Again, this is one of the joys almost of finding an old bike like this because nothing ever seems to go as planned. But that's part of the love, I guess, of being a bike mechanic, is trying to find a solution to problems. I'm just looking at the bike now, thinking, what else am I gonna run into as I gradually build it up? There's nothing like a little surprise, is there? A bit more out of this side. There we are. It's in the drop -outs. Whoa. Nice one. All right, time to get a little bit sticky now because these chains, they're always installed. A little bit of factory grease on them, but I like that because it always seems to be the best stuff. So, first up, we're gonna have to shorten this chain a little bit. So, as you can see, there we are. Now, this chain comes with a split link style uh, joining pin. So it's not like the traditional pins you put in and snap off or anything like that. Instead, as you can see here, first up we need to actually take out a few links just to get it all set up. Here we go, the fun stuff. One of these chains, not dealt with one of these for quite a while. Not been on my track bike for a while. We then put this through the other side and then this split link here. This goes in the direction of travel, so the closed end will go here because obviously when we're pedaling, that's the way it needs to be going around. May need just a pair of pliers here, or a little screwdriver, just to help it go on a little bit easier. Oh. There we go. So obviously that chain, a bit slack. We need to just adjust that, and then that'll all be fine and dandy, I hope. Should just bring up just enough to make it okay. Tell you what, the chain line's pretty good there too. And I bet there was people at home when I was putting on this chain, or at least when I showed it in the last episode, this pink chain or purple, whatever you want to call it, you were like, that is going to look disgusting. Oh, no, 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 look at it now. Eating your words. Looks all right, I reckon. I just need to line up these brake pads before I go any further. They're just annoying me. I just want to make sure the pads are nicely lined up in place. Right, next up is to fit the handlebar and stem. So first of all, we're just gonna put the stem in place. Put some grease always on it, the expander bolt as well, just put some on that too. You don't want these things getting stuck in place. Admittedly, I'm not sure how long this stem will stay on this bike, because it's probably the, one of the nicest things about it, to be honest. And who knows what we'll do with this bike after it's been out for a ride. Right, let's put that in. The good news is I can start to use tools that we're more familiar with in a six millimeter Allen key here for the actual handlebars, or the stem rather. Just put that in. We'll just do it up, just roughly in line with the tire for the time being. We won't focus on it too much, just want to get it nicely set up. Time for the handlebars to go in. Of course you want to make sure that as they go in, that they actually follow, and you get them on the correct way around. These days with an A headset, we're sport really, because you can just put them straight in there with those open fronted stems. Sadly, with the old bars, we're not quite as fortunate. Sometimes it can take a little bit of jiggery pokery to get them around and into position. Just wanna make sure I'm doing that the right way after all. Spot on, and those sort of indentations or ribbed bits on the actual bulge there in the center of the handlebar. They help to match up with the serrations on the inside of the stem too. We're gonna to try and put them nice and horizontal actually, so the drops are horizontal to the floor before talking up the actual handlebars themselves. 
So what, this is starting to look really good now, especially the gold head badge and the gold belt. And believe it or not, we are gonna fit these horrible old brake levers back on. They're held in place with uh, screws rather than Allen key head inside of there. But they're so simple when you can get them off. Rough and ready. Find a suitably uncomfortable place for these levers because they are gonna be uncomfortable. If you look, there's no brake hoods on them whatsoever. Oh well. <laughs> right, I do know that Cy likes a uh, right hand front brake. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. Into position on the front brake. And I'm hoping Cy just wants to ride up hills where he doesn't need any brakes at all because I'm missing stops that go in the tops of these levers. A little bit disappointed with that. Big old looper cable there, just for authenticity. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we've got a result. Right, now time for the back one. Now I know what to do. Should be relatively straightforward. Just for show the back brake, in this case. Almost done now, just the toe clips to be attached on. Fiddly fit for a fiddly little item. And we'll fit those into this old cotter pin crank set. Ah, oh, look at them, beautiful. I've got now just swap over the saddle clamp assembly. As you can see, it's been fitted back to front on this, so possibly the person who owned it before was rather short in the upper body and wanted to get far forward, or maybe maybe there were time trials on it, I don't know. Um, either way, it needs to go on the back of it, and it's a, quite a simple affair, you just need to get it released, and then fit it onto that new seat post we got, along with the brook saddle. Then, we're near enough good to go, the last thing to do really is just wrap the handlebars, but I'm going to do that with my hands are nice and clean, and also fit the cleats on the bottom of size shoes. And to be honest, I might leave him to do that. The reason I say that, I'm pretty particular when it comes to cleat setup, and there's something inside of me which really doesn't want to be responsible if someone else gets a knee injury or anything like that, because toe clips, well, you don't have any float at all, whereas a clipless pedal, of course, you've got quite a bit. Um, and I'm not the only rider who's pretty particular about that. There's people like Mark Cavendish, once when I spoke to him about his own cleat setup position, he said he did it all himself. He didn't want the mechanic to do it because he obsessed over that detail. So, well, Cy, if Cav does it, you can do it too, mate. And as if by magic, there we are. So just need to tighten up these two nuts and that is all sorted. Always put up some grease on any alloy on alloy. You'll be surprised at the problems it could cause otherwise. The biggest problem that you can face working on these bikes is that everything tends to use imperial size nuts and bolts. Of course, for our friends in the United States, that's not a problem at all because generally so many things out there still use that. But over this side of the pond, near enough metric on everything now. Well, there we are. The Ellswick Whirlwind in its restored glory. Well, kind of anyway. I think it looks better than it did when it first arrived into the workshop. Let me know what you think of it down there in the comments section below. And also, what would you like to see me tackle next on one of these renovations? I'm keen to find out as ever. Don't forget, like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up. And why not check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got plenty of goodies, including some very limited edition sweatshirts and t-shirts. And now for two more great videos, including part one, just click here on the bell. And for another maintenance video, click just down here.